This holiday season, give your loved ones the gift of stress-free TV with Control Center by Cavo. Control Center cleans up your home theater so you can control everything connected to your TV with one easy-to-use, family-friendly remote. Shop now and get 40% off Control Center with promo code WINGINGIT. That's $59.95, 40% off the regular pricing of $99.95. Control Center is available at caavo.com and Best Buy. Control Center by Cavo, one remote that does it all. And welcome to Winging It, part of the Ringer Podcast Network. I am your host, Annie Finberg, as always, joined by Mr. Vince Carter and Mr. Kent Bazemore. What's up? Oh, no. And today we are very excited to say that we are joined by future Hall of Famer, NBA champion, NBA Finals MVP, and 13-time NBA All-Star, Dirk Nowitzki. How's it going, guys? What's up? Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for coming. How did I do on that intro? Did I miss any awards yeah, that we should talk about? I got two. No, not bad. Oh, you, you, Vince you has two. It up. You summed it up nicely. He has like a couple thousand points. Yeah. <laughs> Just 30. a few. And he's old. What like, year is like it for you? Twenty two uh, so or three? Twenty one. Oh, same 21. as you. Oh yeah, I thought he's older than me. My bad. <laughs> uh, I'm actually I'm actually a year younger than you. But yeah, I know. We came in together. So. Yeah, no. Vince yeah. is getting old. His memory isn't yeah, so good anymore. <laughs> now nah, he just tried to throw a quick jab. He's like, "You're actually older than me." Right. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Just like quick gear. Yeah, that's all right. I do want to ask real quick. What do you think about? Um, I know you were in the video. Vince just hit twenty five thousand points. I know. That was awesome. Excited to see, you know, uh, playing with Vince, uh, watching him uh, over his career, uh, the, the competitor he is. Uh, and then I got to know him and see how what a great pro he is. And it was, uh, it was a pleasure competing against him and playing with him. And I've uh, been following, obviously, his career closely. It was, you know, I put a, he put a lot of pressure on me in the first couple of years when he came out of the gate playing incredible basketball up there in, in Toronto. And uh, but it's been it's been incredible to watch, and uh, and we've been actually keeping pretty uh, close contact uh, even this year because I had uh, the foot surgery, the stuff that he went through, and so we actually uh, texted a lot this summer. And it's, uh, I appreciate the advice, Vincent, and um, oh, it's been uh, it's been fun. Yeah, how are you feeling anyway? Yeah, so, you know, the, the surgery went great. I uh, did it early in, in April and shut it down early because, you know, you told me it's going to take a while. So I, I didn't even finish the season last year. Yeah. Got the surgery done early and then um, was doing fine, was doing rehab, took it slow, you know, started, like, running in July, August. Was sort of in, in decent shape already. And then in uh, September, I started scrimmaging with some of the guys. You know, everybody meets early and, you know, you play five and five in the gym, in open gym. And I was doing some of that. And all of a sudden, my foot on the side, on the outside, was just starting to kill me every day. And I was like, it's fine. It's just it's a little tendon. I had an MRI and they said, yeah, your tendon is a little inflamed. And um, so I kept fighting through it, kept doing another two weeks probably of working out, of running. And then finally, I scrimmaged one morning, and then I could barely walk. I was like, "This, this is, I've come to a stop here. This is, this is the end." So they shut me down for a while, and um, you know, kept trying to come back a little bit too soon, and the tendon wasn't healed yet. So I had a couple setbacks, and then next thing you know, in like eight weeks of of almost nothing until the tendon was healed. So. That's been that's been really frustrating. That the ankle is actually good now; it moves a lot better. And, and just that that tendon out of nowhere started to get inflamed, and then, uh, that that really set me back far. And you know how it is now at forty, trying to play catch up. You know, yeah. it's like I'm out of shape. My legs are heavy. Your conditioning is terrible, and and you're trying to grind every day. And so it's been a tough road here the last few weeks, trying to get back at it and trying to practice. And you know. So it's that's that's where it's at. It's gotten better the last few weeks, and I'm I'm practicing, but uh, I'm not quite uh, where I want to be uh, in, in game shape yet. Well, so you're back to dunking now, right? I mean, you know me. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I, I was never a high flyer, but uh, you know I could. But I saw the All Star game. Remember? I could squeeze it in. You remember you did the All Star game and you pointed yeah. to the sky. That was classic. Yeah, you know I, I watched. I had, to, I had to give you a shout out. That was awesome. I had to give you a shout out. Uh, that was probably. <laughs> Uh, you know, that was my last All-Star game, and, and Steph kind of, I think, I, I thought Steph saw me on the wing. I thought he was just going to drop it off to me. And when he, when I saw him throw it in the air, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then uh, 
I had to go up there and squeeze it in. And then I gave the, you know, I was in the gym when you won the dunk contest. And right. what was it? In 2000 in, uh, in San Francisco, I was there for the three-point contest and obviously for the rookie game. So I was in the gym and uh, I had to give you a little shout out. Man, that was a long time ago, brother. Oh, my God. Tell me about it. <laughs> That's great. So, Dirk, talk about, uh, you know, the transition from, you know, coming from where you were first to the NBA, you know, just how different the game was then to now. Obviously, basketball evolved tremendously in the last 20 years, you know. When I got in the league, it was it was a little more physical. The, the fours and the fives were bigger, were rebounders, you know. Usually the one, two, three can shoot, but uh, the fours and fives are big boys staying around the paint and rebounding. And, and, you know, to watch the evolution of the game the last 20 years has been amazing. Now, basically, fives are picking and pop into the three-point line. And so when I first got here, it was, it was hard for me. It was, uh, the game was a lot quicker than what I was used to in Germany. The, the guys were more physical in the basket. And so I had some problems adjusting, you know, to the physical nature of the game and you know, there were games in my rookie year where I didn't play at all. And, um, you know, it was, it was frustrating my whole first year. The lockout year was, was tough. But once I got that out of the way and, you know, I had a full summer league after my first year. Uh, I came back, had a full training camp my second year. That's when I really felt more comfortable. My language uh, was getting better. I was, I was understanding guys in the locker room. And so I think that's when I started to feel more comfortable and, I think it's it's hard for a young guy to to play well on the court if he doesn't feel well off the court. So right. uh, that was a big big part of me uh, really arriving here was was my second year. You know, I finally got an apartment. I bought a car. My whole first year, I was driving a rental where the guys are killing me every day. In the <laughs> and, uh, so it, it was a tough transition for me. You know, honestly, now I'm sure we're going to talk about Luca later, and but I think all the Euros they have it a little easier now. You know, uh, I think that. The the game is better to adjust for them. It's it's more spread. It's more open. It's not as physical anymore. The adjusting to the league now coming from Europe is a little easier than it was 20 years ago. Mm. I want to add to that. How's Holger doing? And I, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know your story with Holger and your relationship and how he's worked with you from the time you got here to, I'm sure, today. Yeah. He's actually, he's actually here as we speak, so you, you, you might see him tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, I told him uh, he actually came early in, in training camp and we did, went to China and that my, my foot was just really bad, so we couldn't even do anything. So I told him, hey, once I'm getting closer, you can come over. We'll work on some stuff. And then uh, so he's, he's been here for a week now. We've been shooting almost every day. And, I mean, Holger is obviously a blessing in, in my life and my career, you know. Uh, I, I got to know him when he was about 15 and basically taught me everything I know. Uh, I was just a tall, skinny kid running around the, in Germany, and, and, you know, he formed me into the player and the, the shooter, and, and the, you know, he tried to form me outside the court, always challenging me with other stuff and with music, with books, and he just he was a mentor of mine. And to this day, I mean, 25 years later, he still comes in. We still have a good friendship, and he still helps me in the summers, trying to stay in shape. And so, yeah, he's he's the man. Even though he's getting older, he's uh, we celebrated his 73rd birthday yesterday. Wow. So wow. he's uh, he's getting up there, but you know, he's in, he keeps in great shape and still has uh, his jacket uh, on. Still, he's he brought a different jacket, so <laughs> oh, <finally. laughs> everybody was kind of rattled when he walked in. But no, he's uh, he's been a big figure in, in my life and my career, and it's probably fair to say without him, I would have never gotten uh, gotten to this point. So uh, yeah, I owe him owe him a lot. And so I'm uh, I'm glad he's still uh, still here for me and uh, helps me out whenever I need him. Well, I'm gonna say, um, you know, I obviously getting the opportunity to play with you here in Dallas for three years, uh, got a chance to work with Holger. And uh, he just showed me some things, and it was just, you know, you, when you think you've seen it all, I've done a lot of, you know, you see shooting drills and all of this stuff, and then he's he opened my eyes to some different things and I think took my shooting to another level and some of the things I still use today and just simple things. And I, I think what seems awkward to players in the U.S. was obviously typical uh, with you, Dirk, and just some of the things like his his shooting techniques and some of the things like, shooting with the leg open to stay balanced. Just little things like that that felt weird at first for me has helped me. And I, I think, uh, I mean, that's a great story. You guys should do a, a mini movie or write a book uh, because I think, I mean, not seriously, because I think, you know, what he's done, I mean, obviously for you is well documented, but I, I think people reading some of the, the techniques and how he thinks and operates and 
works with you and I'm sure some other players is, is I think is a, a gem and they should really know it. Yeah, you know we're we're, we're working on stuff and uh, we did uh, we did actually make a movie a couple of years ago where we explained some of that stuff. So yeah, we're uh, you know he's he's. I've seen obviously a lot of shooting coaches here in, in my 20 years come in and out, and, but the stuff that he teaches, the, the small little details, starting with the fingers and with the eyes and with the, even the breathing during the shot, the, the footwork, and, and, and uh, it's just, I mean, it's just so much. It's actually at the beginning, I think, when he, when he teaches, it's, it's a little confusing because right. it's a lot to think about, but, you know, obviously I've took a million shots with him now to me. It's, it's sort of natural, but... You know, sometimes it comes here and work with, with some of our guys for a week, and and obviously they they do like him and they and they see some of the stuff makes sense, but it's just it's just really hard to change a shot within a week or whatever, and then he's gone again. You kind of fall into your own routine, but he does uh, try to give some of the guys some tips here and there, shooting tips. But you know, if you really want to help somebody with a shooting or change somebody's shot, you you need a whole summer, or a couple months to to really get some reps and everyday work. Um, but, he's, yeah, he's, the small little details that he teaches, I've never seen anybody else teach. That's awesome. So, Dirk, Bays talked about when you first came over, you came into the league. Um, on our show, we like to do a little segment called Welcome to the League, where you tell us what was that one moment that you had when you, you know, maybe got dunked on or blocked or you just realized you were playing against some superstar? What was your Welcome um, to the League moment? Welcome to the League. I mean, there were a few in, in my uh, my rookie season. Like I said, we we only what, what do we have? It's like ten days of training camp. Yeah. I mean, it was insane. I mean, I didn't even know all the plays. Ten days and fifty five games. Yeah, I mean, it was insane. We had back to back to backs that year. I mean, it was it was nuts. But my first game, I'll never forget was in Seattle uh, right away and in the wow. key arena and they had obviously Detlef who was Ooh. who was a hero of mine sort of watching him uh, his entire career before the game before the jump I got I got to go over there and meet him we took a picture there were tons of German media there so I was so I was so out of it man I was so hyped I was like this is this is amazing that I'm here right now and uh, this was probably one of the worst games of my career. Uh, I think I was like 0 for 5 from the floor and had like two free throws. That was my, not only two points, but, uh, you know, just that's the, that's the moment. You know, Detlef came up to me after the game. He's like, hey, I really uh, think you're going to be a good player. Just keep working. We exchanged numbers, and anytime you have questions, call me up. And that was so sweet of him to kind of, Helped me out there when when I needed it, and um, that was um, that was really cool. Yeah, so that was my first moment, and my third game at home. Our I think it was a home opener at the time was uh, was against the Rockets, and they at the time had the old school squad with Olajuwon. They had Pippen and Barkley that year, <laughs> and I was I was just in awe. I mean, all three of them. I, I grew up watching basketball in the '90s. I watched every All Star game. I watched all the finals all the time stayed up in the middle of the night to watch that stuff and and those three guys were obviously uh you know three heroes of mine and uh that was so bizarre to standing on on the court and kind of looking at them and and uh and and be on the same court that was uh i was super hyped at that time and um that was uh, that was a really special moment and, and moments I'll, I'll never forget for the rest of my life and you talked a little bit about your car you said you had a rental for a while <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I want to know first of all what was this rental, and then I also want to know what what did you buy with your first paycheck? So it was sort of like a, a, a mid size sedan. I'm not even sure what it was, but it wasn't. But the funny story about that was, so every day I come to practice, and then it was getting warmer there in April, May, because the season, the regular season, was going almost to mid May because they pushed it back. And so it was getting warm in Dallas, and every day I'll come to practice or the games. I'm dressed up, and it is so hot in my in my in my car. I was like, for some reason, it, it, no cool air is coming out, <laughs> and uh, so I was sweating until I found the button. You had to push AC. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Germany, there, we don't have a thing. If I if I put a certain temperature on, it just goes to that temperature, and it's, it's cold air coming out. So I had no idea what that AC button was until probably May, and I'm cooking in the. Jenny. car every, <laughs> every day going to the game at like 5 p.m. I'm cooking and then finally somebody was like hey I don't think that's broke I think all you need to do is push this button here and then uh, cool air comes and out. then I had cool air so that was uh, <laughs> that was my whole rental story my first year and, 
And then probably the first thing I bought was uh, was a plane ticket home. You know, I couldn't wait to go home <laughs> uh, after my first season. I think I must have spent one extra day here, and then I was gone. And then once I came back in the second, my second season, I actually bought a nice a nice car, uh, and I felt like my second year I've I've arrived. That's great. <laughs> Um, I want to talk a little bit about when you played with Vince. Um, I also want to know, did Vince ever dunk on you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, we were both at that point a little older, so I don't think we were great practice players at that time anymore. Uh, but uh, Vince, did you ever get me in a, in a game? Uh, I'm sure. I mean, Yeah, once in Dallas. No more about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when? When you were with Toronto? Yeah. The good thing is about me, I, I always knew I wasn't a shot blocker. So, so when when somebody came down the lane, it was a great jumper. I, I sort of just either try to swipe or get out of the way. Uh, there was only a few times where where I got caught sort of in the air, and that got ugly. But uh, <laughs> you know, I sort of uh, I sort of always trying to get out of the way and let other guys let Damp or oh, you know man. Sean Sean Bradley get uh, get dunked on, and, and I got out of the way. Sean Bradley got dunked on pretty bad by team. Yeah, oh, T-Mac. You know, Ooh, I, 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 give Sean, I give Sean a lot of credit. You know, he was uh, he actually went all the time to blocks and he had some great blocks at 7-6 but you know that comes comes with the with the territory if you're a shot blocker and, and the great leapers that you were and a lot of other guys were and, and you know you're gonna get caught at times when you're a little late and um I actually unfortunately it was my fault that uh t-mac got him pretty good that baseline that one <laughs> year we were in a zone, right? So I'm on T-Mac, and I'm supposed to not let him go baseline. I'm supposed to force the middle, and T-Mac went grip baseline. And next thing you know, he was at the rim, and Sean was a little late. And just uh, that play, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I owe him for that one because uh, you, <laughs> yeah. you see it for a long, long time all the time. So, But, yeah, it, it's, it comes, if you're a shot blocker, it's, uh, it's going to happen. Yeah, it happened pretty fast. I don't think anyone would have recovered from that. No. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one. Uh, Baze, I want to ask you, I know you watched Vince growing up. What's your first Dirk memory? Shoot, man, he, he you know, I was in Golden State for a little bit. So uh, we saw him quite frequently, you know, early on yeah. in my career. Uh, but, you know, my first time guarding him, he was just all, like, we would switch one, one four pick and rolls, one five pick and rolls. He would just stand at the free throw line, you know, post you up there, and it was like <laughs> literally nothing you could do. So. <laughs> I'm like I was, you know, I'm a I'm a young guy. Elton Brand was on the team at that time, uh, so you know, I'm like I'm a, I'm gonna get a oh, stop those days. Yeah, I'm gonna get a stop, you know. And <laughs> sure enough, I try to like you know steal it. Dirk spins off, shoots that you know that patented fadeaway two points, and you know that was kind of one of my welcome to the league moments too. Like I mean, you see, obviously you scored a ton of points, and he makes it look so effortless, but. Uh, to actually be out there and, you know, the high release, you know, at seven feet, you know, it's just like literally nothing you can do. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, let's talk. Can we talk about your uh, championship moment? Oh, yeah. uh, we know we, we, know we talk about welcoming that. to the league and, you know, you know you, we know you had a phenomenal uh, run that year. Mm-hmm. What was it like? What like going through it? Uh, I, I know we talked to, to Steph and Andre about the night before closing out to win the championship, what was going through your mind? How were you feeling? And obviously, how how'd you feel afterwards as well? You know, I was I was super hyped. You know, you're you're basically one game away mm-hmm. from your dream, from something you've been chasing all along. And after '06, you know, we were up 2-0 in the finals. So we ended up losing to Miami, and and then you're like, oh, we'll get a chance again. But it took us, you know, almost five years to get back to that stage again. And and all that's going through your head, you know, you have to come through. You never know, is this your last chance? Are you ever going to be back there again? So you just want to make the most out of it. And, and then actually, game six started, and I was horrible. I mean, that was probably the worst basketball in the first half I've played. I've, I really forced some stuff. I didn't have the rhythm. I think I was one for 12 at half in game six of the finals. And uh, I, was, I was so frustrated at halftime. But the guys were amazing. I mean, Jet had an unbelievable game that game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the JJ was phenomenal for us that series, and uh, everybody was was uh, was playing really well. So we were actually up at half, and I was sitting there a little frustrated. I was like, man, I got to get going. I got to do this and this. And, and Cardinal, as you know, is a fool. <laughs> so he comes running over. He pumps both fists. He's like, yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like. 
Well, we're still up, and you were playing horrible. And we're playing, so, <laughs> so he uh, he kind of made light of the whole situation, and and I had to laugh at him. And then I went back out there and actually made a couple shots in the, in the second half, and and then down down the stretch, you know, we we were already up a couple points, so it was kind of sealed with the last couple minutes. And I just remember putting my head, my hands over my head, and I was like, "This is this really happening? Is this real?" You know, and. And then as soon as the buzzer sounded, I, I, I had to run off the court and actually went in the back, you know, in, in the Miami area and in, in the visiting locker. There's a little sh- a little bench there by the shower. Right, right. And I, I had to lay down. You know, our P- PR guys were chasing me down, but I was like, <laughs> I, I need to get away for a couple minutes. And they were like, hey, you got to come out. You got to get the trophy. And I was like, give me a couple more minutes. Oh, I need to lay here. I, was, I, was, I, had a few, I shed a few tears. I was... I was thinking about stuff that, you know, 20 years ago, the hard work you put in and the people that, that are with you and follow you through this journey. So, you know, it's uh, a lot of stuff going through your mind. And then, you know, once I cleared my mind a little bit, I was able to go out there and really enjoy and see everybody's family members on stage. And, and I remember hugging everybody and and then raising the trophy with, with the whole team behind me. It was, uh, it was obviously a, a picture and, and a moment. Uh, that will stick for, with me forever. And so you were hugging I, people you didn't know as well. Oh, yeah, there was. I mean, you know, Chet's Jet, Jet family. Chet yeah. has probably a hundred family yeah, 100 members. People. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he he's the best. So he, there were there were people on stage that obviously didn't know, but uh, it was it was a blast, man. And I just remember thinking like uh, you're you're the on the best team. You're the last team standing. That's uh, and that's what you, what you play for. And it's uh, that was a thrill, man. It's it's almost it's like the satisfaction that comes through you that summer, you know, when you go, when we I went out here in Dallas or went home to Germany and, and you go out and people see you and, you know, they almost look at you like they just won a championship. That's, that's unbelievable. So it was, it was very, very satisfying after, you know, so many disappointing playoff outs, you know, with, with 06, with my MVP year where we won 67 games and then lost in the first round of the Warriors who were, who were great. And so there were so many disappointments throughout the, those playoffs and then finally to come through and be the, be the last team standing was, uh, was unbelievable. And I think uh, we got all who were watching, obviously, uh, well, you started one for 12 and how did you finish? Yeah, I mean, I was chucking that game. I remember I might have been like, I might have been like eight for twenty something. I mean, I was I was hoisting even hey. in the second half, but uh, you know, just trying to really get going to get and then help us win this thing. And I was finally making a few, but yeah, that was that was honestly in the finals. I didn't I didn't play my best. Actually, the, the team was phenomenal. I was probably at my best in, in the LA series and in, in the OKC series. I had some great games, but you know, against Portland, I think I wasn't that great in the first round and. In the finals, I thought the team really carried me, and our our depth and our, our defense really really helped us win the chip there. And uh, I guess obviously, you know, three Hall of Fame guys, three Hall of Fame talents, and yeah, that was uh, that was fantastic. And I think to add to that, sorry, everybody remembers you guys taking that trophy uh, to the club, and and then buying the big bottle, uh, Q, <laughs> <laughs> big bottle. Uh, was it Ace of Spade that night? Yeah, you know, Q was yeah, man, right, it went viral you know? immediately. Yeah, you know, Cubs was going to do that, right? We went right to live or whatever that place is called in uh, in the awesome. Blue Fountain <laughs> Hotel, or I can't even remember what what's this place called. But yeah, okay. we were in there. I was in there with little Wheezy. I keep saying, uh, <laughs> uh, little Wayne. With, I had a picture with him that <laughs> night. And it was a uh, a great experience, you know, that that whole summer and uh, just seeing the excitement of, of of friends and fans that that have been with you through ups and downs and just supported you and see my family and uh it was um, um it was uh, it was a sweet summer and, and a sweet time yeah I, I know how tough it is to you know get back but um you guys didn't have an easy route there either because you know you beat portland and the lakers that just came off a mm-hmm. uh, championship in 2010 i think mm-hmm. and then you beat the oklahoma city thunder that we're in, in the finals yep. the year after oh year after yeah so yeah. oh yeah so i mean yeah i mean talk about first of all you know, when y'all swept the Lakers, you know, I, I'm a huge Kobe guy. Yeah. And I was watching that. And I was so was like, I. Good God. <laughs> like, I mean, talk about, you know, and J- you and Jason Terry were the only two guys, you know, from the 06 year. Yeah. Uh, talk about, um, you know, what it actually takes to, you know, have the dominance you have in that year and actually finish it all off. 
we were so frustrated, obviously, after all six, you know, you, you blow a huge chance. And, you know, I don't know if you guys remember that, but we were up 2-0 in the finals. And then the morning news was already so hyped here that the local newspaper that they printed their, par- uh, their parade route. So we already had the parade oh. route in the newspaper here after being up 2-0. Wow. And then things just completely went south, and uh, we couldn't win another game. So I was probably as frustrated as I've ever been in, in my career and, and obviously in my life. And, and then, obviously, five years later, you get back to the spot. And me and Chad talked about it all the time, that playoffs. You know, we're like, hey, we, this, is, this is our chance. This is our moment. We have a great group of veterans that, that want to play with each other, that want to win. And, you know, with, with Sean Marion and, and Jay Kidd and, and Pedro, we had a bunch of older guys. That, that, that Tyson, obviously, was a huge key for us. And just a bunch of older guys with no egos that love to play for, with each other and for each other. And, you know, so that, that whole year, we didn't really know what to expect because, you know, in, in January on New Year's Day, Karan Butler tears his Patel attendant that, 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 that day. That day oh, and yeah, that's we right. were crushed for him. He was one of our starters. He was a big playmaker for us. And so we were like, there was a stretch where we didn't play well at all. We lost like two out of, two out of, no, we were like two and seven or two and eight for a stretch there in January. So, but honestly, we got hot at the right time. Uh, besides Karan, we, we were healthy at the right time, playing some of our best basketball at the right time. And, just started clicking, man, and it was it was fun. And me and Jet always said, "Hey, it's this this is our moment. We got to go for it. We got a good group, and we got to keep fighting and keep plugging, even after some tough losses." And um, man, we uh, we came through with with you know, we had really a couple of great defenders out there with Tyson and and Sean and and, and Jay Kidd. Obviously, for for his age, was still tremendous. Garden one, two, threes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, and me and Jet were were trying to carry some of the offensive load, and, uh, and everybody else was so I was playing their role, and um, and it was uh, it was a special year to win uh, to win with that group for sure. That's awesome. So do you, do you play golf? <laughs> <coughs> we're waiting. <laughs> not 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 very successfully. I mean, I, I got clubs, and That's I play uh, a couple times a year, but. I wouldn't say I can play golf. It's right. more hack, hacking away. But I'm thinking that's something once my career is over, you know, I'm going to get into it more and more. And, you know, there I have my crew. You know, Finley. Finn is here now. And he works for us. He loves golfing. I mean, he, he got his golf clubs basically on every trip. So oh, nice. uh, I'm, that's for sure something I'm going to get into more. And I'm sure I'll enjoy it more. Because, you know, we're going to miss the competition. That's for sure. Right. You know, the, sure, uh, sure. The, the, the little rush, the little adrenaline and, 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 and we still need some stuff to, to get, uh, get that stuff out. So I'm sure golfing is, uh, is one way to, to kind of have some fun and, and talk some trash and, and be with the fellas. Yes, sir. Here's a little insider travel secret from our friends at hotel tonight. There are tons of empty hotel rooms out here just waiting to be booked. And Hotel Tonight has partnered with these awesome hotels to help them sell those unsold rooms, which means you get incredible deals. Seriously, if you love scoring amazing hotel deals, you've got to try Hotel Tonight. Forget scrolling through never-ending lists. Hotel Tonight shows you a select list of incredible deals at cool hotels they think you'll love. And they even give short profiles of each hotel complete with all the info you need and pictures of what the rooms really look like. Plus, even though their name's Hotel Tonight, they're not just the last minute bookings. You can also book in advance. Perfect for spontaneous weekend getaways, three day weekends, staycations, road trips, business trips, booking a place with a pool and more. Last minute golf trip, you know what I'm using, Hotel Tonight. So, to start scoring amazing deals at incredible hotels, go to hoteltonight.com or download the app now. Dirk, I'm sure your playoff runs helped and obviously the championship, but I'm wondering, you own the record for the most seasons with one team. What kept you in Dallas all these years? Well, you know, I was uh, I didn't know what to expect at the beginning when I got here to Dallas, you know, was, and then my second year you know, Mark bought the team and, you know, just started developing really a great relationship with him. Uh, he became a good friend on, uh, obviously off the floor and then always supported me on and off the floor. And he made me a franchise player and, and you know, paid me a max deal after my rookie deal. And um, so, you know, he was, a, he was a great supporter of mine. And, and so I always felt like, 
you know, the fans were loyal to me. Mark was loyal to me. This is a great city to live in. And um, so it was kind of easy for me to, to always stay here. I thought we had a great franchise. You know, when Mark bought the team, you know, he really started to change. You know, the the, the Mavericks were a little sort of a little bit of a laughing stock in the 90s of the NBA. And then when he bought the team, you know, he sort of changed everything. We, we got a new arena. We got a new plane. We started to stay in nicer hotels again. And I just feel like he turned uh, the whole momentum for Dallas basketball around again. And, uh, and he was just uh, fun to be around. He was young. He was energetic. He was rich. And, <laughs> you know, he was, uh, he was, he was, yeah, he was, he was at every practice at every game and he was on the plane with us and he was just so fired up and we just developed a great uh, friendship and relationship and, and he's been supporting me ever since. So it's kind of, it was kind of easy for me to stay loyal and always stay put here and, knowing that there's a great fan base here and a great owner, a great organization that uh, that always supported me. Nice. So actually, speaking of Mark, I want to know, tell me about that plane that you guys took to, I think it was China this year? Oh, yeah, that was sick. That wasn't actually our plane. So the NBA, I guess, uh, I guess hooked that up for us, rented it for us. And uh, I think it was called Crystal Charter or something. It's supposed to be one of the nicest airplanes in the world. And so the coolest thing about it was there's a walk-up bar in the front. Yes. So, so I, I mean, I honestly, <laughs> that, that, uh, we were, I think we flew to Shanghai straight for like 14, 15 hours. I mean, we were up there having a blast and, you know, having a few drinks and uh, have a few beverages and playing yeah, I saw cards. DA. Play, yeah, DA was <laughs> I saw, on there. I, I saw the picture. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, playing cards and talking trash and. You know, and then if you wanted to go back to your seat for a couple of hours to come back, there were some other people up there. I mean, we had a blast. So uh, that whole trip was a good bonding. Traveling-wise, it was a beast. Uh, it was a beast, obviously, with the time change. And uh, I think we were a little tired when we came back. Uh, we were only there for like six, seven days. But the trip overall was uh, was awesome. I mean, to see Chinese fans are absolutely crazy over basketball there, and uh, yeah, we had uh, we had a good time promoting the game. That's for sure. Oh yeah, we had Jeremy. Well, obviously their teammate Jeremy Lin. We had him on the podcast recently, and he talked about just how crazy China is and how much they love the NBA and they love basketball. I'm sure you are huge over there too. Yeah, I mean it was it was actually good to see. It was you know they were standing out there like after games or like the one day we flew to the the next city and we got in at like 3 or 4 a.m. There was like a couple hundred people at the airport and when I walked out of the gate, they're yelling MVP. And I, that was, uh-huh. I mean, that's 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 moments I won't forget. So, you know, that's uh, that's really special that they actually remember me uh, being, a, being a half-decent player. And uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. That was, uh, that, was, that was good to see. And I was actually only there being a uh, tourist, I, I couldn't even play and uh, I couldn't practice, couldn't do anything. I was basically just there to enjoy and and for the camaraderie and you know I did some sightseeing and then and spend some time with the Chinese fans. So it was um, it was a great trip for me and you know it definitely there's a lot of opportunities even post career over there if you get a chance to go back. Really? I mean, it's uh, it's uh, yeah it's uh, a lot of stuff happening over there and um, so yeah it's uh, it was a good trip. That's one thing I talked about, I think, in, the, in our first episode about our era, you know, that, that our era of, of guys who go over to China. We, we do well over there. We have yeah. a lot of fans uh, who are fans, obviously, of Kobe and Dirk and Paul. Yeah. I mean, I know uh, Jason Williams well, goes. your a era, of, but also just, like, huge names, not just your yeah, era, yeah, right? Yeah, but I'm saying, but, yeah, it was a lot You're of naming, like, names. some of the best guys, right? KG, I mean, I, I just know that's some of the guys that I know that go over there often. Who are not yeah. I did now. hear KG goes there all he the goes, time. Yeah, who, I mean, he's also with Anta, if I'm not mis- mistaken. So, um, yeah. nice. so he, uh, a lot of us have uh, T Mac goes there often. T Mac uh, goes there all the time. Yeah, he's yeah, he, yeah he's probably there now actually. But uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I just saw him on TV. So no. <laughs> okay, well, he's back. Well, I mean, but I mean, it's a lot of opportunity out there for for the for the guys for us when we're done, uh, yeah. which is a great segue into when are you done? You got yeah. another year or two in you, brother. Well, you know, I want to kind of see how it go, how it goes this year. You know, I, I haven't even played a game yet. You know, so, <laughs> that means you had a year rest. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to see how it's going, see how far my body can can come, and, and I want to make a decision then. But it's kind of sort of feels like this, this is the last run. But I don't want to get kind of too uh, too ahead of myself. I want to kind of see how the body responds. But you know, twenty one years is obviously a, a long time, as you know. It's uh, 
you know we got we got, young, we got young kids and uh it's 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 obviously time to move on soon and let some of the younger guys do it so recently steph curry andre Godala, and i think two of these guys did you guys both just agree with this um i don't know if you've seen this anywhere in the news dirk but was- steph mostly said that he does not think that we've ever landed on the moon so i want to ask you do you have any weird conspiracy theories that we can out you on right now uh, not really. Uh, I I saw he set that up smart because now he got an invite to the NASA. I saw when he's in. Right. Yeah. Sh- by uh, the way, that was on our show, and we we didn't get the invite, but that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's for another day. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So he played that. He played that pretty smart. But he did. no, I can't really can't really think of anything. You know, I'm uh, I'm not a really outside the box thinker like that. I guess uh, I got nothing for you there. That's okay. Did you see um, recently on Twitter they compared uh, T Mac to Kevin Durant? Who would win in their prime? I mean, that's it's always tough to tough. compare players, and then from from a little different generation. But man, there was a, there was a highlight tape off uh, of uh, of T Mac just on Twitter a couple of days ago, or it was a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, he was a problem. I mean, <laughs> handles, shoot from deep, pull up from anywhere, post, pass. I mean, he he was the he was the whole package. So. Yes, he was. I mean, I don't know. KD though is is one of the best scorers this league has ever seen. That's that's I don't know with a seven three wingspan. I mean, it's, it's insane how long he has to handle. It's, I mean, it's tough. I don't I don't really want to pick one there. It's uh, I'll, I'll take I'll take I'll take you there. I guess that's okay. I think that's the right answer. Yeah, can't go wrong there, man. They're they're both incredible talents and. You know, it's this, that's the beauty of this league, of this sport. You know, guys are going out. We lost Kobe, whatever, last year. But the young, amazing stars that are that are coming are fantastic. And I just, you know, this league is in is in great hands. This the sport is in great hands for for a long, long time. With uh, with how many great players we got coming up, and um, so it's uh, this league is going to be fun to watch, and it's going to grow even more. So that's a really great segue into our last segment. Let's talk about Luca. You're kind of a mentor for him. Um, obviously, there's some a little bit of history there with the Hawks, but just talk about him, how he's been doing, um, and if you've been mentoring him as much as people have seen in the media. You know, unfortunately, not as much because, uh, like, I've been hurt and I haven't really been around as much. I haven't been able to practice even in, in training camp. I was always in a training room trying to rehab, and so I wasn't able to talk to him as much as I wanted to, but. I mean, you guys have seen him play. He's uh, he's the real deal. He's uh, he's the whole package. He's he's got the three. He's got the step back threes. He's got all the dribble moves. He's got the in between game. He's got the floaters at the rim. So I, I honestly, he's he surprised me when when we scrimmaged a bit in September. He looked great, and he, he's a great passer for his size. Uh, but I didn't know he he could score like that. He could score in crunch time. Uh, he could score in switches. I mean, he's uh, for us. He's the real deal. He's not even twenty years old. So. Uh, yeah, I mean the sky's the limit for him if he keeps working hard, and it's, it's a different era now. You know, the 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 millennials they they come into this league with a little different mindset. I mean, he basically came in here thinking he belongs here. He's, he's a star already in Europe, and you know, it's completely different from when I got in the league. Not sure if I was going to make it, you know, in this league. And this kid basically came here knowing that he was going to do well and uh, he was going to dominate, and that's how he carries himself. He doesn't really carry himself like a 19-year-old. You know, you only see it off the court. He loves his Fortnite and stuff, but <laughs> when, you, when you see him on the court, it's like he, the way he, you know, the, he demands the ball and talks to his teammates, and, and he's, just, he's not a typical 19-year-old. He's, he's, uh, he's way ahead of the game, so uh, he's, been, he's been fantastic for us, and he's, he's part of the reason, obviously, why we've been playing really well and we've been winning a lot of games. Dirk, are you playing tomorrow against the Hawks? Uh, I don't think so. You know, we're sort of kind of taking it day by day. Um, I've had a not so great day yesterday in practice, so that kind of, as Vince knows, after the surgery, you know, it's, there's a couple of days, two good days, and then you come in the third day, and you know, it's really sore. You can't really move. So uh, I had that yesterday, and in, uh, in some of the we scrimmaged with some of the staff guys and. Um, so I'll see how it is in the morning, but as of now, I don't think so. But you know, that's kind of we take it day by day. That's how it goes, man, day by day. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's it's frustrating at times, but then hey, 
you know, you got to remind yourself, we have, what, over 50,000 minutes in this crazy league and, you know, over, I don't know, 1,500 games. And, I mean, it's, it's insane that what the body has done already and how, how fortunate and how blessed we were to, to play this long and sort of injury-free. And, uh, and so, you know, if you have a frustrating day, you kind of try to motivate yourself and, you know, yeah, your body's been through a lot and, you know, you just got to fight through this and, and enjoy hopefully this, this last season or last two or whatever the case may be and uh, and just try to enjoy it as much as you can even though it's it's hard when when you have little aches and pains every day going up and down the floor that that does take a little bit of the fun away hey what's what's worse the morning time or the night time and late at night when you like let's say you sit on the couch for a couple of hours and you're gonna walk to the bed or when you get yeah. up in the morning which one's uh, worse <laughs> Probably the morning for me uh, until everything, until the blood flows a little bit. Um, so that's uh, that's probably the worst. I'm just, I was never a morning person. I'm more like an evening guy. Um, and so <laughs> practices, practices in the morning are usually rough for me, especially let's say last year I was playing 77 games and the next day I got to come in at 10, 10, 30, practice with these 20 year olds and you know, they're talking trash. I'm trying to get going, but there's just nothing to give. I'm stiff <laughs> and they're, they're going at me and never pick and roll. And it's, I mean, it's, it's fun. And it's also obviously where the competition still comes in and I still love that, but it's also uh, frustrating at times when you see stuff or you want, you got somebody on a quit on a switch and you're like, I'm going to kill him. And then your body is just not reacting the way you want to, and then you got to do something else, and that's really frustrating. But also part of the you know where your experience comes in, and you're still trying to show it, and, and still trying to cook him with a different move, and so it's it's been fun, but it's been it's been different. Well, we wish you the best. We hope you get well soon and get back out on the floor. Oh, Maybe not tomorrow, it. but yeah. soon. And I think that's all we have for you. So I want to no. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys. We for appreciate you. you taking the time out here in, in Dallas with the kids. No, thank you guys. And um, obviously, good luck. Uh, t- not so much tomorrow, but <laughs> the rest of the season, uh, and you guys go get some wins. Uh, wins and Vince, we'll, we'll stay in touch. I'll let you know how the, uh, how the foot uh, the foot comes along. And if I need a couple more hints, yeah, I'll, man. Uh, I'll let you know, yeah. We'll definitely, we'll keep in touch on it. Okay. All right, my I man. appreciate it. All, All right, right, brother. Thank Thanks, you. Dirk. All right. That's it for this week of Winging It. I'm your host, Annie Finberg, joined by Vince Carter and Kent Bazemore. And tonight, Dirk Nowitzki. Don't forget to always rate us five stars wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have any questions for us, feel free to write in to wingingitthepodcast at gmail.com and we will answer your questions if we can. Until next time. Because I'm tight. We are out. This is German for Bessie. Yeah, I know that. Thank you. (laughs)